Yeah, so give your Francophile friends some grace today if you hear them shout Vive la France because as Jonathan sang for us, it is Bastille Day and that's what we call it as English speakers, but in France they say Le 14 Juillet and it does mark the storming of the Bastille Fortress in prison on July 14, 1789 because the people, Stephen, were fed up, right? They were tired of the tyranny and the monarchy, the Bourbon monarchy at the time. That is actually what you're looking at on screen is La Place de la Bastille. That is in Paris where the Bastille prison used to be. It's no longer there, but now you have the July column there and at the top that gold figure is the spirit of freedom. So that's the square again where the Bastille was. Now there are different celebrations and events to mark this day, which Stephen is actually one of reflection and can be kind of solemn because it's about the pride and the unity. And when you think about what happened, people were killed, they were injured when the Bastille was stormed because again, the people were tired and they were fed up of it, fed up with everything. So what we have here is La Tour Eiffel, the Eiffel Tower, for example, it's lit up. There are different celebrations along the Champs Elysees, where the main military parades are. And so, one theme that they have this year for Bastille Day in France, in Paris, is the French troops will march along the Champs Elysees along with representing Ukraine. They'll be standing with their allies. And so, just a lot of different, I think, representation with all of this. You know, yes, as we adopt these holidays from other countries, it's a time to party and celebrate, but in a lot of ways, it's a time to recognize and honor what people have been through to fight for their freedoms and their rights. That's a really American theme, and that's something that all Americans should understand when, you know, some people, a lot of people don't know what Bastille Day is. They mm -hmm. don't know what it stands for. There's a reason it's called the National Day of France. France. I yeah. mean, they stormed uh, a, a capital, a, a structure that symbolized the monarchy, and they, they were tired of tyranny and oppression and overtaxation and, you know, being second class citizens. Mm -hmm. And that's something that Americans can definitely identify with because that's why we c celebrate July 4th. So, yes, it is a solemn time. Uh, it is a time of reflection. It is a time that sparked, you know, the great nation that we know that's influenced culture, you know, for, you know, for eons. And here in Houston, we have great ways to celebrate as well. We have Bastille Day here in Houston. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thankfully you don't have to parler français in order to go to the event that you're going to talk about. Yeah, no, it's a really great day. Uh, it's organized by the French Chamber of Commerce and a lot of groups, you know, that, that back, you know, French organizations here in Houston. Uh, we have face painting. We have some of the best bakeries and restaurants and creperies in town, which, I mean, that's just going to be fantastic. One of our favorites here at Culture Map is Magnol Bakery. They're going to have French wines, crepes, food, face painting, a DJ doing some really chill, you know, d you know, French music. A lot of fun. And, you know, balloons. It's just a real c it's a celebration. As you said, a day of mourning, a day of honoring, uh, pardon me, a day of reflection, mm -hmm. a day of honoring, and then a day of partying here in Houston. Yeah, a day of partying here in Houston. And again, just having that unity there. I do believe you need to buy a ticket if you want to go. I think the admission is relatively inexpensive, maybe right. 15 bucks or something like that. So if you don't mind, I'm going to go ahead and catch a flight to France. Just kidding. I'm staying here. <laughs> nice. Right. Nice. Nice is nice. See? Well, moving on from our French festivities right to floating cabanas. So the word of the summer, this, you know, it's hot girl summer, it's hot guy summer, it's just hot <laughs> summer, you know. Right, as, it's just hot. As ABC 13 notes, this is Houston's caught a fever. So uh, this always breaks the internet when we post anything about Lagoon Fest. In fact, we call it Lagoon Map, a culture map. So Lagoon Fest Texas is pretty amazing. It's the largest crystal lagoon in North America. Um, it's got 14, 12 acres. It's enough water to fill the Galleria, or 14 NFL football that, fields. Like, I was thinking about the size of it. I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> and it's a kind of a piece of, you know, as, as you can see here, it's kind of a piece of Florida here in Texas. Crystal blue water, white beaches, and so they've got these things called floating cabanas, or they can nickname them aquabanas. So it's really what you think. You, you sit, party, sip your cocktail, hang out under a, you know, a cabana roof. And then if you get hot or tired, just jump in the water, <laughs> get back in, repeat, fall asleep, you know, uh, you know, party responsibly, of course. Right, of course. Uh, they now have the largest fleet of aquabanas in North America wow. with 22 floating. People are renting them for private parties, 
you know, uh, girls, girls night out, bachelor parties, bachelorette parties, all that kind of stuff. But it's a really fun way to sit and chill on the water, sip and chill on the water. And then of course, if you, you don't do that, there's plenty of activities at Lagoon Fest, you know, like what you see here. Then they've got uh, dives, slides, a floating obstacle course, or you can just chill on the white sand beaches. So it's a lot of fun. You would not expect that at Texas City, but it's a real, it's a really amazing destination. 80,000 people went last year. Wow, and you do need tickets to go. You can't just show up and start floating in the cabanas well, or anything right, like yeah. that. <laughs> you do need to make sure you have access. Okay, so my spidey senses are tingling, and they're telling me that a pop culture convention is back this weekend. Well, holy cow, Batman, you're right. <laughs> but I'd be, I guess I'd be the Robin in this situation, right? Well, I just want to catch you in my webs. Well, there you go. That's, I look terrible in tights, web. though, so I'll just almost <laughs> say, you know, I'll be the angry editor, Jonah, you know, Peter Parker. Right, yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so we're talking about, the re we're making comic book references from Spider-Man because the largest pop culture and comic book and anime and gaming yeah. and cosplay convention in Texas is back in downtown. People come from basically around the country, truly. Uh, you see Houstonians getting here mostly you know, this weekend, but people start booking uh, hotels from around the country all week. Uh, everything that celebrates pop culture, anime, games, science fiction, uh, tonight's gonna be really cool, uh, pardon me, it starts tomorrow, and tomorrow's gonna be a dance party and a Mario Kart N64 competition, oh, which is nice. just gonna be bonkers. They've got all kinds of displays, all kinds of shopping, like you wouldn't believe. People go just to take pictures with other people in cosplay and, 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 and the amazing outfits. People go through extraordinary lengths, fantasy, science fiction. Uh, they'll have all kinds of demonstrations. They'll have cars on display. They'll, and then w one thing that's really cool too, if you're a sci-fi fan, uh, all sorts of actors and celebrities who are sort of iconic, uh, there's some of the cars, uh, who are iconic in the industry will be there. So guys from John Wick, guys from Terminator, Terry Crews will be there. Mm -hmm. um, it's gonna be really cool, a lot of Star Wars stuff. So basically, it's a place to geek out. You know, we reported this on Culture Map. Houston is the sixth geekiest <laughs> city in the nation when it comes to comic book geekdom and anime and science fiction and all that. So it's a real comic book party here and anime party in George R. Brown. So get your tickets quickly yeah. or just go to watch people. I mean, I, I've seen people, I've, seen, I've covered this many years, I've seen people slow down in traffic just to watch all the stormtroopers and the Boba Fetts and the anime characters walking into the convention center. Yeah. It's really amazing. And they've had Game of Thrones stars there. It's a really big deal. Yeah, the costumes are really cool. Angie, shout out to our director, said she's gonna be there, so she'll have to tell us how it is. So now we're gonna turn the page on the comic books and talk a little bit about sneakers and vintage fests. You might have noticed quite a few of these different events that pop up. There's one that's happening this weekend at 8th Wonder Brewery. Well, you can get your kicks at the Sneaker <laughs> Fest at 8th Wonder Brewery. And yes, to your point, we've been talking about this a lot at Culture Map. In fact, we're going to do a story on local designers who are outfitting to the stars. And retro and vintage is huge. You and I were talking about this the other night. Uh, people are paying a lot of money for retro Rockets yeah. gear, retro Oilers gears, and of course those kicks. And people are even customizing their sneakers to look retro because retro's in, vintage is in, and it's hot. So Rax is a cool spot over on Fondren. Mm -hmm. uh, they're bringing more of an inner loop purpose for the uh, uh, presence for this uh, pop-up. And essentially, there's 40 vendors and shops that are gonna pop up here and offer their goods. If you like vintage, if you like sneakers, if you wanna catch something that, you know, you may be only one of a kind. You know, people would used to scour eBay for this stuff, and now people are actually getting out and hitting these vintage shops. Vintage has been, popular for a long time, but sneaker culture is really huge. Yeah. You know, we have Sneaker Summit coming up in a couple of weeks that yeah. you and I will be talking about too. Yeah. So sneakers and kicks, really big deal. And so if you're a sneaker head, this is, you know, a place to go. Yeah, get this one, is, <laughs> I like that. Thank you. Yes, this one is free Saturday night, 4 to 10 p.m. And like you were saying, sneakers are really big business, multi-billion dollar industry. I think in 2020, it was 79 billion. That's expected to grow to 120 billion over the next four years because you do have designers like the late Virgil Abloh. They are collabing now when he was with Louis Vuitton, collabing with Nike and Air Force Ones. And we know how much it's been a part of culture. I mean, Run DMC told us my Adidas. So people buy these sneakers during these drops and there are big deals. Some of them don't even wear them. You know, a lot of these prices I think are driven up because of the collectors. So if you hear a lot about these sneakers and vintage fests that's why the last one quickly though is about bark and helping out some animals this weekend well you know the great thing about summer it's a it's a it's a time to enjoy our freedom 
you know, Fourth of July, it's a time to enjoy vacation, but there's not a lot of joy for so many thousands of animals mm -hmm. in Houston. Summer is, you know, right after breeding season, so there's so many strays on the streets. They don't have water, they don't have food, a lot of them are injured or sick, and they're overcrowding the shelters. Both of our main county and city facilities are massively overcrowded, so BARC is doing, participating in a national campaign called Empty the Shelters, in which they're basically waiving the adoption fee. Mm. So you can just jump on the Bark page, scroll through, find a dog that, or cat that looks you know, cute or adorable, and if you wanna go meet them, go meet them, no pressure. But you know, if you have any hesitance, hesitancy about this, you can, there's no fee, there's no pressure. The animals are spayed. And um, you get to maybe go home with a furry friend. You know, I you know, know plenty of people who go out for the weekend, yeah. stop by the SPCA or Bark and come home with one or two dogs or cats. So if you really have been looking for a fu you know, furry friend, this is a time to go for free and to meet somebody. This darling dog, yeah. is, uh, her name is literally Darling. She's for adoption <laughs> as well. Yeah. Well, hopefully, you know, we can find some of these animals at home and make their lives a little less rough. Back to you, Jonathan. So much great stuff, guys, as always. Bastille Day, Lagoon Fest, Comica Palooza, Vintage Sneakers Fest, the Bark Shelter. I got two rescues. They're great. Steve and Brittany said she's showing up in her Spider-Man costume <laughs> to anchor the show tomorrow. So we're fully, supposed to be a surprise. We're fully ready for Comica Palooza. Thank you guys so much.